All right. Excellent. We have people logging in here. Good yeah. morning, everybody, or good afternoon if you're on the East Coast. Thank you all for coming to Webinar Wednesday. We really enjoy having you guys every week. Um, today, we're really excited. We have um, <clears throat> a new topic with the mayor. They're going to be talking about, are you ready to sell your homes online, specifically with virtual? So this will be really exciting. It's kind of fun to watch. I got a preview just a few minutes ago, so I think you're all going to enjoy this. Our speaker today is Joe Bicey. He's been in the home building industry for over 20 years and has worked in many departments, including architecture, estimating, mar marketing, purchasing, quality and operations so you got somebody who understands the home building industry talking to you today for sure um, <clears throat> he has um, been working with um, the mayor as uh, both a customer and COO for nearly 12 years so I would I would venture to say he's an expert in this field for sure a couple of housekeeping items before we get started this morning um, down at the bottom of your screen um, if you pull your mouse down you'll be able to see that there are a few um, tools at the bottom. Um, one is the Q&A bubbles, we, and we have that available for you to ask questions throughout the presentation. We find that the flow is a little bit better if we hold the, the questions until the end. So go ahead and type your questions in at any time during the presentations. I will go ahead and read them out loud for Joe at the end so he can answer those for you. If you have questions that are specific for me, if um, there's something wrong with the video or um, you have a question that, um, you know, anything like anything that's more related to the logistics, go ahead and, and ask me directly in that chat function. There's a little chat bubble down there that will um, send a message directly to me and I can work and help you out on the um, back end. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and turn off my video and mute myself and turn it over to Joe. Go ahead, Joe. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so first off, you know, Emma Jane and Chuck, thank you for this opportunity. Um, you know, Ben Mayer's had a, a pretty lengthy relationship with builder partnerships. Um, we see, you know, tremendous value in the webinars, all the, the on-site meetings, the partnership, et cetera. So, you know, this is just a great opportunity to speak and, you know, talk about all the cool things that, you know, is going on in the industry, what Ben Mayer's doing to help support that. Um, and ultimately, you know, where do we think all this is going? You know, so for today, our topic, you know, are you ready to sell homes online? You know, with, COVID and everything that's happened over the past year, it's basically, you know, forced the industry to adopt technology a little bit faster than we have in the past. Um, you know, and that, you know, that being said, it's, it's been very slow going over the last, you know, 20 years. Uh, we've definitely seen a tremendous pickup over the last year with the adoption of technology and the implementation of that, you know, ultimately to support the home selling process, you know, to our potential buyers our leads and our prospects. Um, so, you know, when we talk about, are you ready to sell homes online? There's a lot of questions, you know, ultimately that you need to ask yourself as a builder and then what the impacts of those answers are, you know, to the business, you know, not only from a cost perspective, but also from a value and what that actually provides to the end, you know, the end consumer. So what we're gonna do is, you know, basically look at some high level questions. Um, and basically this is all about the overall journey for the customer. You know, from, from very early on in the process all the way through the warranty cycle, there's touch points within every one of those processes where, you know, visuals, um, documentation, videos, there's all kinds of opportunities for us to engage with our customers. Um, and, and it starts very early on with just, you know, how are we representing our home designs to our customers? You know, there's been this big conversation in the industry for many years now you know, do you need to be 3D or 2D? What's the impacts of that decision? Um, what does it do and how does it help the buyer? And does it give us an opportunity to do more with what we have? Um, and ultimately, you know, does that give us the opportunity to build less sales models? Um, right now, we're in a condition where that really doesn't matter, right? Where, you know, a lot of, a lot of us are uh, faced with being an order taker right now and, and a, an opportunity because of what's happening in the sales cycle um, of being able to limit the amount of homes that are actually being sold due to the influx of everything, all that pent up demand and where it's going. But as we know, you know, the home building industry is cyclical. So, you know, there's going to be that up and down. And when we go down into that, you know, into that trough, you know, what are we doing to engage our customers, incentivize them to, 
you know, look at our companies to say, hey, this is somewhere where I want to go build my home. Look at the information that this builder has given me, the visual uh, representation, et cetera. And, you know, from there, we have all these additional questions. Um, how, what are we representing? It's not only the home design from a floor plan standpoint, but it's also about the structural characteristics of the home. How are we changing the footprint? How are we making that two or three bedroom home a four or five bedroom home? What's the impact to the garage, right? And giving that consumer the ability to visualize and understand what they're looking at. Um, from there, once, you know, a, a typical process is once that, you know, customer goes standpoint, um, now they're looking at home design selections, right? What are the material finishes? What are the SKUs that are gonna be included in my home? Um, how is that going to look? How do all these parts and pieces come together? And traditionally what we do is we either have a design center or you know, a couple boards that are built out that say, hey, here's what it's gonna look like. And you know, everything's flat to the consumer. And even though that backsplash is a, a huge volume space you know, in that kitchen, you know, with, the, with the island and the flooring and the cabinet color, you know, we, we limit ourselves on how we actually represent what that looks like to the consumer. And we do that for a couple of reasons, because, you know, one, we can't build that many combinations, um, you know, to just simply show and represent. Um, but we could start leveraging and utilizing technology to do a better job um, at, you know, creating those visuals and allowing our consumers to understand what's out there. Um, and then ultimately, you know, we're getting to the point where we, we want to be able to sell homes online. Um, we want to be able to configure a home just like we configure a car. And it's taken the car industry many years to get to this point. But over the past three, four years, technology has incrementally jumped, um, giving us an opportunity to say, hey, we actually do have an opportunity to do that now, even at the home where there's literally tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of possible combinations, um, depending on your home building style. Right. There's builders out there that, you know, it's all inclusive and here's the nine packages. And there's others out there that say, hey, the sky's the limit. And you make all those combinations and selection choices as you go on. So when we get into this conversation of 2D or 3D, you know, it's not saying that one's better than the other. It's just there's more opportunities on one than the other. Um, but also it all revolves around, you know, cost. It, it goes around, you know, timing, um, the longevity of the plan, you know, how much how much benefit and value are, going to, are you going to get out of that asset over time? Um, so, you know, with that, you know, obviously ask questions as I go through this, anything specific, I'd be more than happy to answer. Um, I'm going to go through a couple of slides here, show a couple of videos, and then we can open it up for some questioning. So when we talk about the customer journey, you know, we look at it basically in six major sections. And during each one of these six major sections, there's different attributes of that buyer, you know, and what they're expecting. Um, there's different deliverables that we could be providing that customer. And then there's also choices that ultimately the builder needs to make. You know, how early in the process do you allow a consumer to actually customize their home? Um, because, it, you know, the earlier you do it, the more time consuming and expensive it is to actually go through that process because you're not limiting um, all the different possible combinations that may be out there. Whereas once they're typically a customer, their structural options are already defined and now you're simply applying material finish, SKU selection, et cetera. Um, so depending on where you allow that transaction to happen is where, where you ultimately manage the overall time and cost um, to get us to this virtual space. So typically what we've seen on, on the builders that um, and that's about 32 builders, all ranging from, you know, top 10 all the way through the, you know, the top, uh, you know, say 250. Um, and, and what we're seeing is prior to someone being a customer, we, we see this opportunity to have, you know, simple, typical uh, primary bath um, kitchen vignettes that allow the consumer to understand here are the choices that will be available to me but not necessarily in the community I'm selecting um, or the home I'm selecting. It's giving them an overall picture of what's available to them um, as a builder, you know, as myself. And, and here's all the different manufacturers that we support and sell to. Um, once you get through that lead stage, now we're actually focusing a little bit more focused on an, a specific area, um, potentially a specific community. And then ultimately, when we get them to a, a customer, a specific lot. And now we have the ability to say, here are the structural options that are available to that consumer. 
Here are the finishes that are available on the outside of the home. You know, definitely looking into lookalike clauses um, and any of those monotony rules that are going to say, hey, you know, we know we offer this, you know, bluish gray siding, but it's not available to you because your neighbor already picked that. You know, and being able to control and understand all those different triangle or square rules um, that go into our community life cycle. And so once they're a customer, now that we've limited a little bit more, now we have an opportunity to show more and give them more opportunities. And when I say limit, we're not, I'm not talking about the SKU side yet. I'm simply talking about the overall structure of the home and how you would interact with all the different rooms within that home. Because selections alone, um, you know, potentially there are tens of thousands of selections when you look at the overall house um, and all the different combinations. Right? So you may be limited to 30 or 40 total selection choices, but the amount of variation within those selections could be, you know, could be vast. So you know, working with different partners in the industry, having the ability to get to that SKU level information, present that SKU level information to the consumer, and then ultimately represent that in a virtual experience. So you know, as buyers are you know, moving throughout the country, understanding what's available to them from their, you know, from their sofa in their own home, um, you know, gives us, I, uh, we believe, an opportunity to, you know, showcase all the different selections that are available and potentially even curate some designs from the builder standpoint to say, hey, here's what our designers are seeing as, you know, a trend. Here are the things that are popular in our area and or region. Um, once we get through the selection process, it's also during the build cycle. You know, how are we, you know, communicating with our customer? How are we engaging with them? Are we showing them construction videos or photographs during the process? Um, you know, it, especially if those buyers are from out of state or sight unseen, you know, the ability to stay, you know, communicating and stay connected with those customers during that cycle is, is super important. Um, and then ultimately to the warranty, you know, we sell all these different SKUs and manufactured items in the home. What kind of warranties are available on them? How do we do a better job at communicating all of that additional attributes and all that data, you know, to our customer? You know, typically over the last however many years, it's been a, you know, a binder. We send those binders out to our customers, you know, and basically good luck, wash our hands. Um, you know, an there's a huge opportunity there to basically continue that life cycle um, with, the, with the buyer themselves and the builder, you know, through the warranty process, providing them all the documentation digitally, and keeping that connection with your customer um, and ultimately having a customer for life. You know, that's definitely a conversation that I know from builder partnerships um, standpoint, you know, there's, you know, webinars on that, et cetera. Um, you know, it's how do we continue that engagement process with that customer over the long term? So 2D or 3D, does it matter? So basically our research has shown us over the last 10 years that, you know, 75% of our buyers are definitely visually informed. Um, showing them traditionally that 2D black and white floor plan on the left-hand side versus showing them, you know, basically a, a 3D virtual of that floor plan. And that can be done in many different ways, right? Whether it looks like the image that's on the screen or it's an actual walkable house where you could virtually see what's happening inside that home. How do all those characteristics come together? What do all my SKU selections look like when they're actually implemented into my kitchen with my structural options, right? It gives us an opportunity to just further that communication um, and provide all the visual content that ultimately helps, you know, a customer stay engaged and ultimately make a selection quicker. So what are the powers of the visuals um, and how do we help engage, you know, our customers? You know, so those five bullets on the left, you know, th those are key items in the power of what visuals provide us. You know, ultimately we want to trigger emotions, um, you know, the ability for someone to, you know, fall in love with that kitchen, really understand what the selections are available to them. Um, you know, ultimately commun our, our, communicate our messages faster to the customer, ultimately giving them those opportunities to have those personal conversations about trade-offs, you know, this cost versus that cost, you know, and really have those intimate conversations and allow that to be you know flushed out where you know historically you know talking with lots of salespeople you know they they joke that sometimes they're marriage counselors because you know the opportunity to have these conversations with third party versus having them privately you know it opens up a whole new you know uh, a whole new opportunity you know to to you know, not only 
show and maybe sell more options, um, but the ability to have all those combinations understood, not only visually, but then from a cost perspective, right? What, as I'm making these choices, what is happening to the cost of my home and how are we tying all those parts and pieces together? Something that is really important is, you know, visuals can also communicate something that is incorrect, right? So we wanna be really specific about what we're showing the customer, um, you know, not just using stock imagery, um, really going through the process of, uh, of taking it out of the process. You know, the buyer is a lot more educated at this point. They have access to data at their fingertips, right? They want the ability to understand more and more about the different parts and pieces in their home. So we, we definitely believe, you know, representing the actual objects um, to the buyer in a virtual space, you know, provides them that opportunity to understand exactly what they're looking at and how those decisions will ultimately impact them as a buyer. You know, and, and holistically, you know, does it give us an opportunity to, you know, because we can see it and a, a customer can see and engage um, with all those selections, does it provide an opportunity for us to sell more options, um, provide more information? And all that's fine and good, but how do you actually manage all of that data and all the, the facilitation of all of that information? So we'll talk a little bit about what that looks like um, overall. So these are just some, I'm going to go through some quick videos here. I have a much longer video at the end that I'm, I'm going to play through and talk over as we do it. These are just some very high level, simple representations of what we're talking about. This, this process that we're talking about from a virtual standpoint works on very inexpensive homes all the way up to very expensive homes, right? So there's an opportunity on both sides, but when you look at it from a sales opportunity, we see a lot of the builders that are going down, you know, the, the lower end price point, first time buyer, um, you know, entry level product. This is a very inexpensive way to communicate, you know, what's actually happening with this home, what options are available, what are all the different configurations that are there, and also provide some videos and other, you know, other things that come through this process. Um, and we see that from a, a price point standpoint, because instead of going out and building multiple models, you know, your ability to go in pre-sell communities and potentially sell out communities before you ever build a model, we have seen that time and time again now over the last two, three years. So what I'll do is I'll click on this one first. This is just a quick example of you know, a very simple home. And what it's going to do is it's going to basically filter through all the different conditions um, that this house has. So you know, whether it's a brick stone skirt, um, changing the elevation, adding another brick skirt for that elevation, right? You have all of these different combinations. And this is a very quick, easy thing to do and accomplish, especially when you have a 3D model, because it gives us the opportunity to actually see how those things change um, shape and size. The same model that I'm representing to you here, we also have the opportunity to go and basically cut a section through it. So let me just go back here real quick. A little bit out of order, here we go. So this is basically that same house, just the floor plan view. It only has a couple options, you know, two different kitchens, a sunroom combination. What are the impacts of how that house lives and what's the interaction of that? You know, and whether you wanna see this in a 2D view from, you know, just a direct top down, or you want that sub view where you can look down into the space, whether it's furnished, unfurnished, right? All of those things implemented, you know, either affect time or cost, depending on what you're trying to accomplish in the communication, um, ultimately, that you're trying to, you know, provide your customer. Let me just jump back one more here. So, you know, again, that same exact model, you have opportunities to do a couple things. You know, we could easily generate video from these things now where you give somewhat of a walking tour of what's happening with this home. So this is just basically going around the front of the home, but there's nothing stopping you from going around it, you know, diving, you know, top down, taking the roof off, jumping into the floor plan. You know, there's a lot of different opportunities here. And these are basically very quick, easy outputs because that 3D model allows us to generate all these different combinations um, of output for the customer. And we see this from a video standpoint as being, you know, an opportunity to, you know, as that customer is making their selections, being able to send them a video minutes later and say, 
know, here's what your house looks like as you walk around it, share it on social media, share it with family. You know, you have this opportunity now to send some pretty rich graphics. Um, and this is not, you know, where it was five years ago, where it might have taken, you know, weeks, if not day, you know, days or weeks to go and create videos. You know, these are outputs that are basically available to us on the fly as these models are being produced and the selections are being made available. So I'm just going to flip through here and get back to my slideshow. Okay. So when we get to design center selections, you know, we're talking about the opportunity to show all the different SKU level information um, to our consumers and, and giving them an opportunity to not only see it, but compare it, understand all the different values, you know, valued products that come from there, um, whether it's warranty information, care and maintenance, installation, right? You have all this rich content that goes along with that SKU. So there's several partners in this space. Um, you know, there's plenty of opportunities out there to say, hey, how do we connect with this SKU level information and then ultimately represent that to the customer? This is also a critical piece for, you know, BIM Air as we're building products for builders is really understanding what SKUs are selected. Um, and I know that's a challenge from the home building industry overall. Um, I know a lot of the builders that we work with start off, you know, pretty generic. Hey, you know, here's my level one and inside my level one spec selection are these three or four fixtures. Um, and typically what we're seeing from an enterprise standpoint is a lot of that data is not, is not being managed as effectively and efficiently as it could be, um, especially as we get to more rich content that we want to deliver to the customer. We really do want to get down to that SKU level and understand exactly what's in the home so that way it can be represented to that customer um, before its actual reality um, where they can actually walk it. Um, and then ultimately to, you know, once you have the 3D asset and you have the ability to understand your home design, now you go through the structural process, you could understand your SKUs, now it's how do you configure your home, right? So ultimately configuring your home is saying, hey, my specific kitchen, how am I going to understand what my cabinet color is, what my backsplash is, um, all the different appliance options that are out there, um, and really understand from a visual aspect, what does that look like and what are those decision impacts um, as I'm going through the process? So we, we have a product that we've been working on that allows us to actually configure that your specific home, right? So if you get the sunroom, it actually shows the sunroom with that specific kitchen and all the impacts of what's happening with that customer. And all of that's made available because, you know, we're also managing the construction document process, building that BIM model. So it's, it's basically allowing us to capitalize on the asset that's already being produced, you know, from an architectural standpoint but adding value now to what's happening on the marketing and sales aspect. So it gives us a, a lot of opportunities to say, hey, here, here's your house, your kitchen, um, all of your selections, and here's the impact to your mortgage and or your overall cost, right? So it's tying all of those parts and pieces together, ultimately providing a tool that's going to allow us to sell homes you know, online, facilitate the process of selling a home with a lot more rich data um, that's available to us. So I'm going to I'm going to flip out of the presentation right now and I'm actually going to show up two quick videos. So just give me one second here. Okay, here we go. So I'll come over here and I'm just going to hit play on this. And I'll just talk over it. So this is an example of, you know, a community that we're working on where we're actually putting the actual home sold. This is all virtual, um, all hundreds of thousands of different combinations of houses. And what you'll see during this process is the ability to understand. Sorry, guys, that's my dog. Luna, it's okay.
sorry about that. So what you'll see is all the all these homes that are showing up. Basically, these are sold as you know as the normal sales process as a customer. You'll notice that they all have this grayish blue siding on it. That's because they were all sold within you know within a week and a half time frame. They haven't been to their design selection appointment yet, it, which is where they go and they actually make their home uh, color selections and choices. So part of this video is allowing us to understand, hey, here's what my community is going to look like. Here are all the different homes that have already been sold on that specific lot and in that community. And then what the impacts of all of those you know, sold conditions are. And basically what happens is we're tying this information to you know, the builder's ERP data. So as they go through and they say, hey, we now have design selections and those colors are updated, the colors of those homes actually update. So it's something where we're producing output on a day-to-day -day basis and making that process a lot more rich um, you know, for the end, the end consumer. Okay, so let's switch to another video here. So this one is gonna basically be um, a single model and as you can see, the total amount of material choices and 3D assets here. And this is basically BIM Air behind the scenes showing this information. So this is not you know, a user experience standpoint. It's basically showing you all the different combinations that are available um, for this builder in all the different conditions. And I know this goes pretty quick, but I can definitely make this video available as well, Emma Jean. So as we all know, kitchens have tons of options. And these are all basically all the different variations that you'll see. And, you know, when we talk about all the combinations, you know, you saw that list of all the available selections, but it's the combination of those available selections, you know, that ultimately, you know, really makes that, that information multiply dramatically. So everything that we're seeing here on the screen is all being produced um, in the Unreal game engine. Um, so, you know, from a home building standpoint, we've definitely transitioned a little bit from a technology standpoint. Um, we're, we're, we're going full force down the gaming route and really connecting our BIM models and our 3D assets directly into the game engine, um, which allows us a, a tremendous amount of flexibility on not only the delivery of the application, and how we deliver it, but also the amount of combinations and visuals ultimately that can be provided um, across the board. So I'll just let that play out over the end. So. You know, there's basically, you know, tremendous opportunities we see in the future. And I think, you know, what we've seen is as our builders continue going down this path, there's a lot of reuse of information, um, a lot of the same SKUs, a lot of the same manufacturers, right? And that gives us an opportunity to constantly be lowering the cost of these types of applications, because a lot of that content's already built, and it allows us to get to market quicker, right? So ultimately, you know, this is a, a huge opportunity, I think, overall. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen there for a second. Um, you know, and it gives us an opportunity to say, you know, here are all the things that we're going to be able to provide and show our customers um, and ultimately give them all of that, um, you know, control so they could see all the different impacts and how those impacts um, ultimately affect their home, their structural options and combinations. So, you know, circling back to the very beginning, you know, are we ready to sell online? Um, there's definitely some that are closer than others um, at this point. There, you know, technology, we believe, has caught up. Um, and it's basically 
you know, I, I shouldn't even use the word caught up. It's been available in un- other industries now for several years. Um, the home building industry is really caught up, you know, through the adoption of more and more technology. So that's given us a huge opportunity to capitalize on what that looks like overall. So with that said, I think that concludes, you know, from a presentation standpoint, and we can open this up to, you know, questions, comments, and be more than happy to jump back and forth into the presentation. Yeah, and we have a we have a little we have a more intimate group today. So if you if anybody wants to ask a question live, I can go ahead and allow you to ask your question live if you don't want to type it into the <clears throat> Q and A bubbles. But um, that was fascinating. It's it's amazing to see what um, what you can do now. I watch my kid play um, Fortnite, and it, it's interesting to see you know walk him watch him walk through his world. In, in Fortnite, and it's and we're bringing that same technology to to home building. It's it's pretty amazing. So so the interesting part. So Fortnite is owned <laughs> by Epic Games. Epic Games is who owns and operates Unreal Game Engine. Um, so Epic does about a billion dollars a month in revenue from selling virtual assets that you can never own. So <laughs> it's very it's super interesting for us because that I mean it's a tr- like it's a tremendous opportunity. Um, you know, we're actually selling real assets, right? Things that you could own, have value, um, you know, are intangible. So it's, you know, how do we, you know, continue to utilize that technology, you know, to provide our customers more interactive experience? Yeah. No, I I can see there's tremendous value in that. And it looks like we do have a question. Hold on one second. Um, This is from John Peterson. How are costs quoted as the buyer uh, progresses through the selection process? Great question. So, and we've seen this, it it differs from builder to builder. Some want to be fully transparent with pricing day one, you know, before you're even a customer, um, where, you know, we're using that information that's coming from their enterprise system, no matter, you know, what that is, pulling that data out and connecting it to SKUs. Um, We see other builders saying, hey, I don't want to show any pricing until we're already under contract, right? Which, you know, you can make an argument for both, right? Especially in this market today, you know, where it seems like price escalation is a daily occurrence, you know, it's something where that's a lot of control over information and and value of data that's constantly changing. So it really depends on the builder, right? And that's not, you know, I'm not trying to take the easy way out. It it really is builder and region specific, um, but the capability of doing both is available, right? So there is an opportunity to, to start one way and pivot and shift if you need to, um, and then ultimately go back the other way. You know, if the market turns and you want to be more transparent and show more information, um, you know, ultimately having that opportunity is there. Excellent. Thank you. And then we have Christopher, Christopher Patton, who wants to ask a question. I'm going to go ahead and allow him to talk. Go ahead, Christopher. Hi, uh, it was a really interesting presentation. So I'm actually coming at this, uh, I'm actually kind of intrigued. Uh, I know I've done a lot of work in Unreal myself as a programmer, funny enough. So one, my big question is I know that like the Unreal game engine, it's great for making standalone apps. It's fantastic. But the second you enter the web world, you're in a whole new kettle of fish here. So what kind of performance can we expect? Like, is it going to be slow and sluggish? Like, how do you take into account, like, say, a phone versus, you know, a a beefed up desktop, say? Great question. So, um, and I'd be more than happy to answer that. So, you know, BIM Air's done a ton of work over the last three years. Um, we have an, un, you know, fantastic relationship with Epic Games. We meet with them almost on a weekly basis. Um, they're super engaged with us from an AEC standpoint. Um, and what we figured out and what we've developed over the last couple of years is an opportunity to use the game engine to not only generate output, So we can actually generate every combination of a house systematically on a server and produce it as an image. And that image can then be utilized for delivery to every mobile device and app, almost like a Matterport tour, but you're being, it's being produced real time on the web. So we use Unreal as almost an image generator. So it'll actually allow us to manage all these combinations but then it allows us to use the technology that exists today, you know, from a mobile and tablet standpoint to deliver those things as images, videos, panoramics, um, whatever it may be. We are actively and probably for the last, uh, I'd say over a year, um, working with 
on streaming service, right? You cut How do out we there deliver? for just a second. What, you're working with who? Sorry, you cut out. Um, Amazon and Epic together. You know, figuring out how a streaming service could be a lot more impactful for us, right? Where we can load that Unreal game engine to the cloud and deliver it via a link to a customer, right? And we we successfully successfully have done that now, you know, several times. There is cost implication to that, right? Because now you're down to you know online streaming, you're paying per minute type thing. Um, it's not overly expensive at this point, but I don't think that's something you want to open up to your entire prospect base. You might want to be able to control that at the consumer or, or customer level to be able to really engage and then set a limit, right? I'm going to allow a $200 expense for this consumer to be able to go and make all the combinations and changes that they want to, right? And ultimately, that's a decision for the home builder. We, we're seeing it as, you know, can we produce the technology? Will the, con the technology constantly evolve? Um, and then ultimately, what does that look like? Um, and then, you know, Chris, at, you know, at, as someone that's been in Unreal, you know, we're, we're, you know, as a development company, very excited about what's coming for Unreal Engine 5. Um, I, there's some big announcements coming from Epic. I think you're going to see a tremendous shift in 2022 to a lot more streaming capabilities, very cost effective solutions, because um, ultimately it's, they're seeing the engine as something that's going to be a driver of, you know, all this visual communication, especially to the AEC industry, which is basically untapped at this point. Excellent. Thank you. <clears throat> Does that answer your question, Christopher? Well, yeah, I'd like to ask a couple more uh, if there's a chance at the end. So. Yeah, let me get Jason. Jason has a quick question, then we can come back to you if you have another question. Um, Jason has a question. He says, how does Bemare tie into the design selections made at the studio to re-render the community images? <clears throat> so basically what, so depending on what your ERP system is, and we've done this with, you know, two or three at this point, um, it's an opportunity to, you know, pass that SKU level data to the Unreal Engine. And then when you do that, those selections render based on what's available in the library. Right, so it, working with the builder, it's really building out what the library looks like, um, and understanding that you know here's all the available selections that will be available to that customer. Excellent. Does that answer your question, Jason? And if you um, if you'd like to um, ask additional questions, go ahead and raise your hand, and I'll allow you to talk. <clears throat> Christopher, if you have another question, feel free to ask. Uh, yeah, like I know uh, one of the big challenges that I've ran into, especially like developing our own apps internally, is one thing I'm really not a fan of is like giving all our data to a third party company. And then it kind of just sits there and we're relying on them to do the bulk of our heavy lifting. And what I really like about this technology, I know from a VR perspective, especially from a programmer perspective, it's a nightmare. Like it's never something you want to handle in-house so like that part of it is really impressive i think you're offering something very valuable here the home builders but like let's say i did want to make a model you know we, we have a home model with all these options is there any way i can communicate effectively maybe through an api with your system and ours to kind of build like our own marketing tools internally while leveraging a really solid vr product yeah, yeah I, I think ultimately there, there's capabilities for all of that um, we could definitely have a sidebar conversation and talk about like how all those things, you know, how that potentially could work. Um, we, we've done lots of integrations. Um, we provide a lot of technology out to our builders. You know, we're definitely not, you know, BIMAIR is not the one that's going to say, hey, we're going to produce this to, for you and we're going to give you the output, but we're never going to give you the source, right? We, we definitely want to work together as, you know, trying to figure out a solution that holistically is going to allow, you know, the industry to move forward. You know, do, do you get, you know, first to market exposure and, you know, opportunities? Yes, right? But long-term, we're planning on doing that. You know, we, we want to be able to impact the industry in a really positive direction. Yeah, it's definitely really impressive what you guys have there. I know, like, it's exciting, actually, to take a look at that. So I'm intrigued for sure. Very cool. Um, and Jason has a question. So this might be one, uh, he wants to know how pricing works. And that, that might be conversations that you have with each builder individually as they get further down in the process with you. But that might be, are you able to answer that at kind of a higher level? 
Yeah. So and it, obviously this is always a tricky question because, you know, partly what we do is we look at it as you know, there, there's a basis, you know, of do you have a model? Do we, are we building the model, right? There's a lot of impacts to the pricing conversation. Um, that very simple house I showed you with all those outputs, you know, literally from a, from nothing but a napkin sketch going all the way through that process, creating multiple videos, multiple outputs, you're in like the $4,000 range. Um, when you're looking at a home that was like that very last video that has literally hundreds, if not thousands of combinations um, of different materials, um, you're, you're definitely up there. You're in the, the $20,000 range, right? But for, for that specific builder who's going to build that home a hundred times, right? With all those different selections, you know, there's a, there's a cost, you know, a component to that of, you know, a value, you know, over time. Um, and how does that play into that overall schema? So, and I'd be more than happy to like go through a project, really understand it, scope it, proposal, the whole line. All right. Does anybody else have any other questions? Those are all really great questions, you guys. Hey, Joe. Okay. Uh, this is this is Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Um, in some of the earlier versions, I saw where you could build the, the sales price as through the selections, but it was also building the mortgage. Is that is that also capable? I know the builders cut that off, but a lot of the builders cut it off because they want to have them come to the, the design center. Or they want them to come to the sales center. But if I remember correctly, you had the capabilities of doing both, building the sales price and also building the monthly payment. Absolutely. Right. And again, it's, it's a builder's decision. I could tell you for like, we have two active projects going on right now that are taking deposits. Um, they're going through the mortgage application process. Like there, there's, there's endless opportunity here, right? It really comes down to individual states. What's a, available via law, right? To say, hey, can we actually take this payment online? Um, does it have to only hit a, a debit card or checking account? W what are you allowed to do through credit, right? It's answering all those questions and aligning all of those. Um, once you have all those answers, you know, your opportunity to actually show and move through that process, that's pretty straightforward stuff to do. It's really the back end side of that that you know usually causes all the drama for us. It's, it's like saying what is available and is it different in this state than that state, um, and really managing all those little intricacies of how that happens. Um, but to I answer the question direct, yes, like I, absolutely, I wish the more builders would be more open. They think, <laughs> oh, my competition will see my pricing. But your competition has your pricing. <laughs> That's it, right. All I got to do is come in and talk to their salesperson on Wednesday, and they'll spill their guts. That's Open right. it up and let the people do the selections, and let them build their and reduce the amount of time in your design center, reduce the amount of time in your sales center, and let them work on this uh, on their own. I, I it's totally such agree. A great benefit. All right. I think we have another one from Chris. Uh, Chris, do you have another question? I, I just never turned his hand down. Oh, God, gotcha. sure, sure do. Oh, he does. <laughs> 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 Go ahead, Chris. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a bit of a nerd in this space for sure. So, uh, <laughs> love it, love it. I'm definitely the designated nerd at my company. So um, <laughs> one thing I was curious about, like I know it's actually – like looking at the community view overall where you're taking a VR tour, like I'm guessing like it, it's probably not artists just making those assets all the time. Like what technology are you actually using to like create those renderings inside the homes? Because I know at my company, we have quite a few home models. So I know that's like a big ask to like have all these represented in a 3D space, but like how, like, is it something you can just do with a hollow lens, walk through a house and build a model? Is it something we require artists to make for us or how does that So, so our, our entire goal from BIM Air standpoint is to only have artists building content, skew level information, materials. The actual CAD geometry is coming from SketchUp, AutoCAD architecture, Revit. It's coming from the construction document itself because we want to make sure that the document and the deliverable from a media standpoint are one and the same, right? So our entire process is built and built around plan change because we know as builders, that's we do that real well. We change constantly, right? So 
our ability to control and manage that change is what's really important in this process. So a lot of the technology we have written allows us to take that, you know, CAD geometry or BIM model, process it so it applies all the correct content and materials, and then bring it into Unreal so all of our asset libraries already connect. And that's really important for us because we know we're going to change, right? So day one, we came into this saying, it, we're not doing this one time, right? And that's a, a huge disconnect that I see in the industry today is as we do work and we send things over the fence to a media company, it's totally disconnected from the rest of the process, right? So as that plan changes or options don't, don't, aren't available anymore, right? Now you have these assets that are disconnected. And you know, working from an architectural standpoint, I see it every day where, hey, no, this is what we're going with. You turn over a document, it goes to media, two days later, guess what? That wall just moved six inches, the island had a shift, like all of these impacts and things happen. So now that we have the model connected through the value stream, we simply just rerun it, right? So it allows us to go through that process a lot faster. So the upfront initial time, just like any other media company, what it's going to take to go from you know 2D to 3D all the way through the game engine. But our ability to manage and affect change through that process is light years ahead, right? Because we, we spent all that time on being able to manage what that value stream looks like all the way through the process. Okay. All right. That's a good answer. <laughs> I like that. It's a, it's like the whole shin concept. Start at the beginning and make sure that everything's connected from the beginning to the end, always beginning with the end in mind. So that's that's a great that's a great asset for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Any other questions? Oh, we have uh, go ahead, Chris. <laughs> one more. Uh, I swear this is my last one, I think. So like, how are you actually delivering this through like a web client? Like, is it just a standalone, like some kind of component? Because I think for us, it would be really handy to be able to say, take our own marketing material, you know, develop our own little thing, but then just have your thing pop in as like a 3D rendering of that. So like maybe just an individual inside view of the home or something like that. Is, is that something we can do on an individual level? Or is it all just one big package? Nope, absolutely. It could be individual scenes, rooms, first floor only, um, you know, all of those capabilities are there. Um, delivery wise, again, it could be, it could be a panoramic. So it, it works just like, um, you know, a Matterport would. It could be video, it could be stills. If you're looking for the interactive model where you actually walk through, whether it be on VR goggles, you know, a simple controller, um, that could be delivered through a game, you know, so it could be a PlayStation or an Xbox. Um, it could be app streamed with um, Amazon. So you could embed an app stream on your website. And as you click on it, it basically fires up the Unreal model. Um, I think over time, that's going to become the de facto solution. I don't think it's there from a production standpoint yet, right? You still have this, there's still a load time, right? There's still, there's still some things that the industry needs to catch up with. Um, they're doing it. Obviously, they're doing it in the car manufacturer side but they'll make you watch a 30 second video first, right? So behind the scenes, that thing is loading and it's processing, doing what it needs to. Um, you know, so there, there's all those opportunities are there. It's just, it, it's really thinking through the process of when you present this information to the customer, what's the experience that they're gonna have to walk through? Not only the first time, but the second time and third time, right? As a consumer, if I were to go in and configure my house and I had to watch a 30 second video every time, I'd go nuts, right? But that's me, I'm in it every day. Right. So I'd watch it the first time, but that's it. I'm not watching it again. Right. So the next time I have to go in and I, Hey, skip the video. And now I sit and watch the wheel spinning for 30 seconds. Right. I, I don't know. We, we don't know if that's acceptable yet, you know, to the industry. Right. Cause everything today for the home builder world is like, I need it now. Right. Quick, 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 less than a second. Show me the image, show me the change. Right. And you could easily do that with imagery. Right. We're not there yet from an interactive standpoint you to be able to deliver that quickly. Well, I think that's coming a lot quicker than people might realize. I mean, uh, this, agreed. Yeah. Like the technology leaps and streaming has been leaps and bounds since, you know, even five years ago. Right. Totally agree. Okay. That's a good answer. I was really hoping you were going to say that because that's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> awesome. <you> can... <laughs> well, it's, it's really good, good work you guys, you guys have done. Page. Yeah. It's really, it's really impressive actually to be honest.
I've never yeah, actually be more than happy to continue the conversation. So you know, yeah, Emma Jane, I'm sure you, you, you could share my contact info. Yep. Um, and, and Joe's and contact info comes out in an email tomorrow. Um, just as a thank you for attending the webinar. So you'll get an email tomorrow and Joe's email address will be on there as well. And I think it's just Joe at the mayor.com or is it J J by C J by C. Yep. J by C. So J B U Y S E E at the mayor.com. S E. Two, two S's, two e. one E. <laughs> two S's, one E. What you, there you S -S -E -E. go. S S E. So I have your name spelled here. So I'll, I'll fix that so that they can. Uh... I always do that. I put two E's instead of two S's. So his my, email my... address is J B U Y S S E at bimair.com. So there, right? Perfect. There you go. So if you'd like to contact Joe, you can reach him at his email right there. You'll get his email. I'll double check to make sure it's spelled correctly <laughs> in the email for tomorrow. And you can you can contact him directly at any time. Um, and then, uh, yeah. Well, thank you guys all so much for coming. It's been a pleasure. We've had some great conversation and some great video and some great content. So if you need anything else, feel free to contact um, us directly here at uh, Builder Partnerships and Shin Consulting. And be sure to join us next week. Another member of the Bemare team is going to be doing a lumber case study with um, Ed Houck, our expert, uh, our expert lumber person here in the office. He's been he's been following lumber like crazy. It's he eats, sleeps, and breathes lumber right now. So um, you want to join us next week to learn a little bit more about what's going on in the lumber uh, situation. And um, Bemare is going to be there. We'll have Dave Burley from Bemare um, with him to talk about material usage in, as it relates to lumber. So we will see you all next week. Thank you so much for joining us. And thank you again, Joe. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a great week. You too.